Hello, my name is Robert Richter. This talk will be about CXL error reporting. It has created together with Jasen, who joined online probably. This is a short overview of the presentation here. I will give a brief overview on the CXL design with respect to impact on, on Rust and error reporting. I will especially talk about CXL memory devices and then go deeper into the error handling here. Where I will also briefly touch the RCD mode, which is the restricted mode introduced basically with 1.1 and the impact on error handling and then an outlook on kernel implementation and also user land. So in the end, I hope there's some room for discussion. Okay. So how does a CXL system look like? We have basically additional to, to existing DRAM in the system. There's now a CXL memory device plugged in to the same system, similar to PCI. This is shared through this uh, through a link here, the CXL link, uh, and this enables us to include additional memory to the system through a standardized inter interface. Uh, we have a way now to include uh, memory with different uh, uh, characteristics. Be with this, which can be optimized uh, with respect to costs, uh, capacity, power, etc. Um, this memory resides on the uh, device here, uh, but it is managed and controlled by the host, which means that the memory itself is plugged in to the system's current address space. And as, as such, it is accessible through load store uh, semantics to the system. I also want to mention that uh, this uh, device topology is visible in the PCI hierarchy to some degree. I will talk on this a little later. Uh, and this link here is, can be shared with PCI so that you can also use this link to plug in PCI devices and the devices then show up as yeah, PCI devices with PCI host. So how does all this impact uh, RAS and the error detection on these devices? In a native system, we just have the the DRAMs here and the CPU, there's a memory controller in the CPU typically, and that's it, no big deal. We can fetch the errors from there. With CXL, this is different. Uh, we have now a host. We have now a host here and a device, a device where the memory is on. We don't have any longer a unique memory controller in the system. We have now more entities that can uh, detect errors from system memory. The device can also report errors and uh, provide also error details here. Once an error pops up here in the memory, in the device's memory, then this must go through the device, through the link and to the host back. So many components are involved here to detect the error compared to the uh, local system memory. And with more locations also, we see different error types in the system, which have a different error flow. And all this makes things more complex. Also, another note is that these devices here come from different vendors, so it's no longer a, a 
Unix system from one vendor. So we have here different uh, memory cards inserted, which have might also have different characteristics or different implementations of the error, uh, error reporting. What else has impact or affects the error reporting and trust here? We also have firmware first and OS first. I will talk on this later in the details on the memory. We have this two CXL modes. The VH mode virtual hierarchy is the yeah, current implementation basically. And there's the restricted mode. Both modes have different topologies. And this also causes a different error flow. Another thing is we see CXL memory and memory the same as standard system memory. So we then will also have the expectation that we have the same look and feel with respect to error reporting here. So that raises the question how we integrate this into existing subsystems, but this might not fit well because of the changed way the errors are reported. We might need to implement new tools to detect the errors, or we might uh, add the error handling part to existing tools like ND control also. And the next complexity here is also error injection itself. We have this many comp components involved and tools and for each we might need different, for each kind of error type or component, we might have, might need uh, different tools, different approaches, how these errors can be injected. So where can errors happen in a CXL memory device here? You see here the, the host and the device that is connected through the flex bus or basically a CXL link if there's a CXL link connected. Then we have this three components here, CXL RAS capabilities, PCI AER capabilities, and here down also the mailbox interface. For the CXL link, there are three CXL protocols we talk on. There's IO, MEM and cache, and this can be formed to two groups. So one is the IO part and the other is the uh, cache MEM part. We, depending on where the arrow happens, we have, it can be either happen in the uh, host or in the device. So we have four points where protocol and link arrows can happen. Uh, one here for the cache mem part, host and device each, and here for the I.O. part, also uh, host and device each. And then there's the uh, device error itself, the, or device related errors itself here, which report memory or uh, thermal errors on the device, and we, these are locked in the uh, event lock and uh, the mailbox is used here to read this out of the system. So based on, on this system design, we have four type of arrows that can happen. The first two are poison and viral. These are basically integrated into the memory management of the CPU. Uh, both are unrelated to CXL. We don't need additional drivers, so they have already uh, solutions here, also from the handling point of the host. For poison, we uh, tell the host that there's corrupted data with a, with a data packet, pack, packet and the host then has some host processor specific behavior, which could be, uh, yeah, yeah, marking this memory uh, bad also. 
depending on what is what's happening. The only difference here is that we need to enable poisoning through mailbox command mechanisms. And then it's just enabled. Viral is uh, slightly the same. We once an uncorrectable fatal error is occurs on the device, for example, it can tell the host processor and then there's also some host processor specific behavior, which means basically the system or once an, such an error occurs, the system mostly does not cannot continue to work and typically this leads to a system freeze or a system resets depending on the implementation. Now there are the CXL memory errors. Uh, we have these two types, the protocol errors and the component errors. I will go into more details in later, for, in later slides. Uh, basically, for protocol errors, we are using the PCI subsystem, the AR uh, error reporting. And for component errors, we have a mailbox. That is that can be used to read the arrow log or event log. So protocol errors. There are with two uh, differences with, between firmware first and OS first. In the firmware first case, the firmware just con consumes the arrow, and it may then signal uh, to the OS the. Yeah, and using existing ACPI methods, the server, the, the error that happened. For this, the CPRO error format was extended in last UFI specification to also re represent CXL protocol and uh, device errors also. So these are then typically sent through GHS interface to back to the host. The OS. In the OS first case, the OS must handle the AR events using the PCI subsystem. Uh, if there is an internal error, then the OS needs also to examine the CXL Rust structures here. And depending from where the error was detected, the, either the downstream port or the upstream ports needs to be checked for errors. For components errors, we have uh, or we need a CXL driver, which basically has uh, two parts or serves two parts here. One is to access the event log down here with some sort of event handler. And the other is to maintain or to, to control the mailbox interface to read out the, this, this error, basically. So once the driver is initialized, uh, the driver must first take control of the memory error reporting here. It's using the ACPI OSC method, uh, which means that the OS must request that it further wants to report errors and then the firmware needs to grant this, ex this request and then it can continue uh, and basically looks into the event log if there's an event pending or so when the mailbox interface is, is used to fetch the errors from there the event driver then further parses the error records and reports in them further and may, may also have some further actions to report this to the operating system yeah, that can have yeah, further actions on the error. Some notes on the differences between VH mode and restricted CXL mode. This is the software view of a VH uh, yeah, of a VH case and basically the most interesting part is this one here in the middle 
this is the, the part where no restricted CXL device is included. And we have, we see here the, the root port. Uh, we have a switch in between here with a uh, downstream port and an, an, up, uh, an upstream port here. And this one is then connected uh, to the endpoint. All these components are visible in the PCI hierarchy. And we can use PCI access methods to access the components of, of every component here, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the structures of every components here, uh, either in the boot port or the down or upstream ports or also the endpoint. And this means there's basically a way to access to easy to access with existing methods the uh, PCI structures that handle the, the AR arrows. If restricted hosts, host, this is different. You see here the or one node here to the restricted uh, CXL devices. Once the device is in the system, the another restricted uh, CXL host is created which forms a pair. So uh, same as here for this device, which was originally attached to this switch. So we have always a um, host device pair available in the case the, the device supo only supports restricted uh, CXL mode. And another note also, here's the, here you see the PCI link uh, sh uh, shown up, which means that here is a PCI device connected to. So the same CXL node can can also be used as PCI device. Some more details on restricted CXL device mode. This shows the diagram how how this is seen in the system. We have. Uh, a restricted host here with a downstream port, and here's the uh, restricted uh, CXL device, the RCD, which also has an upstream port here, which is not visible in this uh, image, but it also exists. Now in CXL RCD mode, which is the former 1.1 mode, we don't see this downstream and upstream ports here. So this these are not part of the PCIe hierarchy. Also, the device shows up as an root complex integrated endpoint. Uh, and that's why we have also an event collector here, an RCEC, who is now responsible to um, propagate, propagate the AR arrows. To access the downstream and upstream ports, there is an additional root complex register block, which resides somewhere in the memory mapped ranges. And this needs to be mapped separately uh, to get access to the downstream and upstream ports. And this register block basically uh, shows up with a PCI type one or type zero header similar to PCI. And there in is also a link into the component register set. Component register set contains the CXL RAS capability structure to read out the to read out the uh, uh, CXL protocol arrows. Uh, so this is the same here, but it yeah, needs to be handled differently once we once an arrow is detected here in the RCEC. So what, what is in the, miss, in the kernel missing all, uh, um, all of this? So where's the RCD? So RCD mode is missing. I sent a patch series two weeks ago here on this. We also need a super extension of the CXL protocol arrows. I think there was submission already on the mailing list. 
then the AR handling needs to be, of the PCI subsystem needs to be modified in two ways. One is to make use of the CXL RAS capability structures uh, in case an internal was detected um, of, an, of an CXL device or host. And then we also need to add AR support for RCD devices, RCD um, mode devices, which means that we need to detect the messages coming from an RCEC. This is a CXL device. We need to extract the downstream and upstream ports that are uh, in separate uh, memory ranges. And for this all, we need to extend PCI infrastructure in the kernel. When uh, also, is what is also missing in the kernel is the interrupt support. We need this as well, and there's also no event driver at the moment. It must not necessarily a separate driver, but we can also uh, extend, for, for example, the uh, CXL mem driver in the kernel already. And then the next question here is how we can extend existing subsystems. Do we have, yeah, we need to extend the kernel logs we might want to attach the, the error reports to trace points or may, maybe also we extend the EDAC subsystem, which gives us the next question on how we... Sorry, can I just ask a quick question? Uh, just a clarification on the previous slide. The mm -hmm. CPER record, yes. is there an OSC to negotiate if the OS has any idea what that is? Pardon? Is there an OSC? As in, can, can, you query, can the firmware query the OS to ask whether it's understood, or does it need to do, well, it's chained CPER records? Because if we have an unaware OS, which this should all work, well, okay. If you're I, doing I think it's just code, a, an extension of the bitmap of the kind of error that happens, so. OS, OSC already extended to support this. Okay, cool. Yeah, this handshake. Mm -hmm. The next slide was next slide was about uh, user space here. So many things could be moved out to user space, which includes uh, which could include also mailbox interaction, monitoring tools, event handlers. There is also there might be a need to, for address translation to uh, know yeah to have a translation between device addresses and physical ad uh, system addresses which might not be trivial and fault analysis or an interleaving region setup could be also moved out. Uh, but the general question is how we, yeah, what, what's the kernel user interface, how simple we want to have the kernel drivers here and uh, what, how, yeah, how this could be look like. And, but to some degree, the kernel should handle the arrows also and be aware of at least uh, fatal arrows. So to summarize all of this, we have this CXL way to add, a flexible way to add system to the memory uh, for, um, yeah, to have the same look and feel as for native memory we want to have or we need RAS here also as a solution. But there are many components in, involved with a variety of errors that can happen. Uh, some of this is already available in the kernel, uh, machine check exceptions, for example, and uh, parts of the PCI error reporting that can, that can be reused but the CXL protocol and component error implementation, this is completely new and we need new patches and kernels for this. And I hope we can also contribute a little here in this area. So that's the end of my presentation. I would like to thank you. And I hope there's some, some room for discussion also, or some questions. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So references are uh, uh, CXL specification version. Pardon? Yes, it's public. It's public, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
Does this work? Yep. Yeah. Um, at least with regards to the, the mailbox interrupt stuff, like this is more of a like kernel, like more less TXL and more like where we are with the kernel. Um, I also want mailbox interrupts. Um, and right now we're, the, the caveat uh, is basically like dynamically allocating um, vectors for the, the DOE. Um, but I'm wondering if we can, for, for, for the users that want interrupt support that don't have that problem, um, can we just have a, a, a basic MSI, MSIX implementation and just go from there? I'll take that one if you, if you don't of mind. Course. Okay, so the interrupt situation today is ideally we'd like dynamic resizing of the MSIs allocated so that along come various things and various different bits of the driver and they all want an MSI and they can all request it and we just keep sizing the thing up. Unfortunately, the kernel doesn't yet support that. There's been some discussion of it. Uh, but it hasn't happened. But what we can do is the equivalent of what the PCI port stuff does for the switches, where you basically have a whole load of pre-registration things where there's little bits of code for all of the features that might be there that go snooping around in all sorts of config space and various other places, figure out the largest MSI number, and then just allocate the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we've got in the, the, yeah, it was in the, as you say, the DOE stuff before. And I mean, my personal feeling on that is we just take it with the first user. What we haven't yet done is accept any of the users. So it's been in several patch sets. One like simple solution to like that, that, that crossed my mind, but it's, it's obviously not, not, not usable, but like, like just allocate an obscene amount of vectors. And yeah. That's that's why. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And just one thing. Um, I would like. Well, I would like to see all the uh, parsing and log handling to be user space. People like me will not do log um, error handling in band to CXL. We do everything out of band uh, mm -hmm. for various reasons. Uh, so anything that will be inside the Linux kernel will be useless to me. Um, but you know, obviously you need stuff in the Linux kernel, and I'm fine with that. But um, you know, all the uh, parsing, handling, and so on of the log you get from the device is something I wish as uh, user space, so they can be reused by other people. Um, if it's a memory error, you've got to handle it in kernel. Well, like you got, the, you got the poison. That's it. No, no. You, well, okay. Yeah, uh, you get the poison. I don't need any anything else. That's fine. I I won't be doing anything in the band. I cannot, like, actually, like, so, so you do I nothing technically preemptive. cannot do anything in Vantage. Okay, so, so you do nothing preemptive if you get a memory error. So normally the first thing you do if you get a memory error like that from a RAM scrubber, what do you, what do, you do for DDR RAM scrubbing? So, so sabbatically, I'm talking about here, like, um, you have to think, like, in my case, it's pyramidal. I don't know who is running the operating system. I don't know what the operating system knows. I don't know what it is. So it's like, <laughs> can't do anything. It's not my problem. But I need to be able to get the error log out of them. Yeah, so you don't even tell them that the memory is corrupt? So they're going to get the poison. So I assume by oh. default, if you have a basic operating system, they're going to get the poison. The poison is going to be beyond the CPU. The CPU is going to get EDAC. EDAC, you're going to put page poison and so on. So you've got to go uh, machine check it to exception and so on. So it's going to be fine on their front. But on my side, I still want to know about the error. So um, I understand what you're saying. So it's, it's, it makes sense to me, but that, that's an implementation uh, choice. Oh, no, uh, customer use choice, yeah? data center choice, policy choice. So uh, uh, different uh, data center would have different uh, strategies. But CXL spec supports this. So what, what happens is uh, you have two mailboxes. The device is required to have two mailboxes. So it's designed as that firmware, let's say in this case, could be out of the band, and the uh, host use different mailboxes. So the device could say, hey, send the correctable errors to one mailbox for OOB to consume, and uncorrectable error to the, the other mailbox for, the, for this kernel and OS. Uh, the yeah, it's uh, like somebody can correct me, but like it's just the primary mailbox that yes, we yes, currently have. Yes, there are two. That's what. Yeah, there's two sets of mailboxes. Yeah, yeah unfortunately not. It's optional. 
the secondary secondary ones up in all there's no guarantee it's there and to be honest the use model around that is horrendous for any guarantees that someone isn't already using it so it, it was put there for that purpose it's not easy also the design is that the corner driver will do the direct interaction with device nobody else for the primary mailbox um so that uh, once it gets it you can choose not to deal with it then it goes silent and then OV takes care of it right. okay let's thank the speaker <laughs> thank you